Are your files missing? Maybe you accidentally deleted something, or even worse, malware has removed your files for you. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how you can try to get it back. So your files have gone missing, whether you accidentally deleted them or malware has removed them, let's take a look at how we can try to get them back, all right? The first thing we need to determine is where were the files initially because that's gonna determine what we use to try to get them back. When we think about our PC or our computer, we have what we call internal storage, right? Storage that's located inside that machine. And then we have external storage. These would be things like USB hard drives, portable hard drives, thumb drives, flash drives, whatever you wanna call those. Things we attach to our computer from the outside. So we have internal storage and we have external storage. Windows treats that storage differently and handles the removal and deletion of files differently. So it's important we understand where our data came from, all right? So when we talk about internal storage, we've got a really good kind of a backup or a, a safety net called the recycle bin. It's gonna be very handy, probably know what that is already. When we talk about external storage, however, we don't get that safety net. So we're gonna have to use some third-party software to try to recover the data. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Join me on my screen here, and let's start with that internal storage, right? When we think about uh, our hard drives, our, our storage inside our PC, when we delete something, it's not actually deleted, right? Basically, it's hidden from you, so you can no longer see it, but it's still there. And this is that safety net, right? It goes into what we call the recycle bin. And if I realize that I've deleted it before my recycle bin is emptied, before I take out the trash, right, then I can get it back very easily. Now, once the recycle bin is emptied, once I take out the trash to the curb and they haul it off to the dump, it's not gonna be so easy to get it back. So you've got this little window of time. For example, I've got a folder here on my desktop and in there, I've got some other folders, marketing graphics, YouTubes, a good old PowerPoint presentation, right? And I'm going to delete that entire folder. So I'm gonna right click on it, choose delete, or you could hit your delete key. You might have done this accidentally. Uh, and what happens is it goes to my recycle bin. I've got my little trash can right down here on my desktop. I'm gonna open that up, and there I can see that folder sitting there in my recycle bin. And if, it ha if I haven't taken out the trash yet, right, if it's still here, and when I say take out the trash, I can choose to empty my recycle bin, right? If I click on that, now that data is gone and I'm gonna to have to do something else to get it back. But before I click on that, if I haven't emptied it yet, I can simply right click and choose Restore, right? That means put it back where it was. And voila, it leaves the recycle bin and there it goes. It's on my desktop. I can now access it again. Everything is safe, Whew, right? I got all those pictures back or all that hard work I did on that work document. It's all back where it should be. So easy enough. Another method we can use with our, our internal storage is something known as previous versions. This is built into Windows 10 and it allows me to go back to previous versions of files. Really handy when we're working with documents that have changed and we wanna go back to an older version, but it also works with, with deleted documents as well because the, the document that's deleted, right, we have a previous version of that document where it wasn't deleted yet. That's what we wanna go back to. Here's the problem with previous versions, you have to turn it on. Right, it has to be enabled. It's not turned on by default. You've got to dedicate some space to storing these previous versions of these files so that you can go back to them. So if you delete something, you can't go turn on previous versions now and hope to get it back. It had to be turned on before the document or the information got deleted. For example, if I go look at the properties, I right clicked on that folder and I'm going down to properties here at the bottom. And on the properties, you will see a previous versions tab right there, all right? If I click on that, if I can get out of that, let's see here, here's. There we go. Sorry, my Zoom got stuck for a little bit there. If I click on previous versions, notice I don't have any, right? There are no previous versions available. So this is telling me that I haven't turned it on. We've got other shows where you can check out how to turn this on if you are interested. Definitely a good, a good idea, it helps keep your information safe, all right? Uh, so those are a couple of methods you can use for your internal storage. If it's not in the recycle bin, however, if that's been taken out, or if it was on external storage, we've gotta use a different method because once they're removed from the recycle bin, they are permanently deleted. We can no longer access them through the operating system. That's when data recovery software comes into play, all right?
I'm going to use a thumb drive as my example here, but again, it could be a, a portable hard drive. It could be um, you know anything that you've attached to your network externally. I have one that's called USB Drive G here, and in there I've got a folder called File Recovery. It's actually got the exact same content in there, my graphics and my YouTube documentation, things like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. All right, so I'm going to right-click on it and choose Delete, and I want you to pay real close attention to the message that I get here, all right? Notice it says, are you sure you want to permanently delete this folder, all right? Because it's not going to the recycle bin. I'm not going to be able to get it back. Let's verify that, right? And I'll zoom back out and notice my recycle bin down here is empty, right? The trash can is empty. I'm going to click yes and my trash can is still empty. Right? It didn't go there because that's the way Windows handles external storage. It does not send it to the recycle bin. So now what do I do? Right? I'm stuck. I really need that data back. I did not mean to delete it or maybe malware has done something with it. How do I get it back? Third party software. Right? There's lots and lots of options for when it comes to data recovery software. Most of them work exactly the same right we're going i'm going to show you how uh, the one that i like and i use works um, but honestly any of them can do the job some of them are most of them are paid right they usually have a free version but it'll be limited in what you can recover because they want to make a little bit of money which is fine um, so they might let you recover just for round numbers right? they might let you recover 10 files or two gigabytes worth of data but if you want to recover more than that you got to use their pro version or their paid version so browse around look at the different options about out there decide which one is going to be best for you determining you know if you want to pay for it or not and how much the free version will let you recover some of them will will scan your entire drive and show you all the stuff you could recover but only if you pay do you get to recover all of it. So pay attention to that when you're looking at them. I'm using one called Recuvia. And so what I want to do first, though, is, is when, we, when we look at a thumb drive like this, and you can see there, there's no data on here, right? This folder is empty because I deleted that folder. One of the things malware can do sometimes is it can try to hide your data, make you think that it's gone, get you to pay money or give them something, and then give you your data back. Well, the tricky thing is your data never left. They just hid it from you. You don't see it there. And so you're willing to do what it takes to get that data back when actually it was there the whole time. You just didn't know it was there. All right, so I want to show you a little trick here. And this doesn't work all the time, right? But it's definitely worth a try before you, you go to any more drastic measures. When you're looking at File Explorer, and I go up to my View menu, right up here at the top, right? I'm going to click on View. One of the options is to view hidden items all right all right here it says hidden items notice it's unchecked by default we don't normally see hidden items but i'm going to simply go to view and put a check mark for hidden items and look at that there was data there all this time and i didn't even know it i couldn't see it because it was hidden now it's still hidden right i've just turned on the ability to see hidden objects notice it's kind of grayed out, almost blurry there. So it's letting me know that it's still hidden. It's just showing me all the hidden things. To unhide it, to get it back, you simply right click on it and go down to properties at the very bottom. And then there's a check mark right here for hidden, right? So I'm gonna click on that to uncheck hidden. In other words, don't hide it anymore. Click okay. And then you wanna pay attention to this. Apply the change to this folder subfolders and files. So not only the folder, but all the things inside the folder I want to unhide as well. Absolutely, that's what I want to do. So I click OK. And now look, it's no longer hidden. Even if I uncheck hidden items, I can still see the folder because it's no longer hidden. So that's a real quick thing you can try. Maybe you'll get lucky and maybe all it was was hidden. It's not actually deleted. Yay! All right. But worst case scenario, right? It has been deleted. That's when we move into our, our third party software. Now I'm going to use a program called Recuvia. As I mentioned earlier, there are several out there. Uh, find the one that works best for you or that you can afford, right? Depending on what the different options are. But they all pretty much work the same. Click yes to the UAC because it does need administrative access to be able to try to recover these documents right? or whatever it is you're trying to recover. I'm going to click next on the intro screen and the first thing it's going to ask me is what am I trying to recover? And this is where you can start to, to shorten the amount of time that it's going to take to do the recovery process. Data recovery is, is a time consuming process. It's looking bit by bit by bit at these drives or the storage, whatever it is you point it to, trying to find these deleted files. 
Anything you can do to simplify what it's looking for or where it's looking can reduce the amount of time that it takes. I mean, it could take days depending on how much storage you have. And, and it's worth it, right? If you can get those pictures of your kids back, we definitely don't mind spending the time. But if we don't have to, why, right? So let's make sure it's as, as focused as we can on what we're trying to recover. Uh, my options here and most programs will be about the same. Hey, you want to find pictures, music, documents, videos, or all files, right? In my case, I've got a mix of files, so I'm going to leave it on all files. And I'll click Next. Then, where is the file located? If you choose I'm not sure, it's going to search everywhere it can on your computer. And this is a really long option. But if you're not sure, there's the option. I happen to know that it's on a removal media, so I'm going to choose that second option on my media card or iPod. You could also say it was in my documents when it got deleted, or it was in the recycle bin and I took out the trash, right? I want to see if I can recover it from there. Or in a specific location, I could point it to an actual directory uh, if I knew where exactly that file was. So I'm going to choose on my media card and I'll click next. Now if you choose this option and you know, like let's say you have two or three thumb drives plugged in, but you know the files are on thumb drive one, right? Well, unplug the other two. That way it's only going to search that one because you know that's where they were and you don't have to waste the time searching the others. Make sense? All right, I'm going to go ahead and click next. And then here, it's giving me the option to do a deep scan. Typically, when we first run a program like this, let's just do a kind of a, a, a light scan, if you will. Because if it, if it has been deleted and it hasn't been overwritten yet, then it's going to be pretty easy to find. And, and this brings me to another point that I want to make. If you ever delete anything off of a, an external piece of media, like a thumb drive or a USB hard drive, stop using the drive, right? If you want to try to recover the data, the best thing you can do to, to increase the chances of recovering that information is to stop using the drive. Because of the way drives work, when you delete something, it's actually not gone. It's still there. It's just no longer visible to you. And it'll remain there until you save something else. And as soon as you save something else, we can overwrite what you deleted because you deleted it. So the system says, you don't need this anymore. I'll write right over it, right? So stop using it. You don't want to write over it. It'll make recovering so much easier. If you do a light scan and it doesn't find what you're looking for, then you can come back and do a deep scan. And this is going to take considerably longer, but it really does bit by bit by bit by bit search of that drive, trying to find files, even files that might have been overwritten. There's a chance you can get them back. But only use the deep scan if, you, if you've tried the other types of scans uh, and it didn't find what you were looking for. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start. And it's a teeny tiny thumb drive that I use for this example, so it went really, really quick. That is not normal, right? Normally it'll take much longer uh, depending on the size of the drive you are scanning. But here I can see all of these files that it's recovered. Right? or that it's seen. I shouldn't say recovered yet, right? It found all of my YouTube documents, and you can see the, the path in there, right? It was in a folder called File Recovery Marketing. Remember, that's the one I deleted, right? And then down here towards the end, I can see no overwritten clusters. And notice the state says Excel. Well, if I make that a little wider, you notice it says excellent. So what it's saying is these files that I've found haven't been overwritten yet, and there's a really, really, really good chance that I can get them back. The state is excellent. You might see some that aren't so good, right? That say some of the clusters have been overwritten, or the state is not excellent. You can still try to recover them, just understand that it might not be able to, right? It depends on how long it's been since you deleted them and whether they've been overwritten or not, all right? So, uh, now that it's found these files, I can choose individual files that I want to get back. Maybe I said all files, but I don't need all of them. I just want to find a couple of them, or I can check all of them, right, and restore them. And then you're going to click Recover. All right. And then it says, where do you want to put them? I'm going to put them back in their original location on that USB drive and I'll click OK. But you could put them anywhere, right? Maybe that USB drive is giving you trouble. You want to put them somewhere else. I'm going to click OK. And it says, do you want to restore to the same drive? This can reduce the chance of successful recovery, right? I'm going to say yes in my case. But again, for you, if you're having trouble with that drive, maybe put them somewhere else. All right, we'll let that run. And there we go. I see I get a total of 29 files fully recovered. That's a good thing, right? You might not get them back, but 
you know, it's better to get some of them back than none of them back is what I always figure. So maybe something got overwritten. Maybe it wasn't able to get all 29 files. It only got 27. It's still better than nothing. You'll also see that most of these software recoveries are going to try to upsell you, right? Uh, they want you to buy their pro version. Um, and depending on what the options are, right? If, if it only gives me, I can only recover 100 files. And if I want more than that, I've got to pay for it then there's your chance, right? You can go and pay for that. So different programs will have different options and different paywalls, right? When you're gonna hit that paywall. So take a look at it. Like I said, this one's for Kuvia. Um, there's a, a lot of them out there that can do software data recovery. Find the one that, that works for you or try a couple different ones. And that's, that's another good point I should throw out there. If this one didn't work, I wouldn't give up. Right? I would go find another program and try it. I still wouldn't write to that drive. I would keep it safe and maybe try a different one and see if it has any better luck recovering those because they all you know, work about the same, but it's worth trying a different one if one of them doesn't work. Don't give up, there's still hope. So hopefully that'll help you in your endeavor to restore data that maybe you've accidentally deleted or malware has taken away from you.